Hey, Blender Bob here. Now, people, please stop freaking out about the amount of polygons in your scene. It's not going to impact the rendering or it's going to make a very little impact. Really? Seriously? You don't believe me? Watch. So this is what we're going to use for test. It's a 27 million polygon LiDAR scan. Why is it black instead of gray? Because we're looking at the wireframe. You can see that on my machine, Blender can very easily handle that many polys. It's no problem, it just goes really fast. And since I know you're gonna ask in the comments, these are my machine specs. If we check the stats, we can see that the scene is 9.41 gigabytes right now. Using Alternate D, I will make an instance version of this geometry. As opposed to a duplicate, an instance copy means that for the computer it's the same object that is being used twice, so it doesn't copy in memory all the 27 million polygons. But it still needs to display it and put a copy in the graphics card memory, and that's why it takes so long. So we wait, we wait, we wait, takes forever, until finally we get our copy. It took 30 seconds to make the instance copy. Now I can move it aside. If we look at the stats, even if I double the amount of geometry on screen, you can see that I still have only 26 million polygons and not the double. And the memory is still at 9.71 gigabytes. Now I will delete the instance and this time I'm gonna make a real duplicate. I will edit the video because it takes actually an entire minute just to make the copy. And now I'm at 53 million polygons and my memory is at 15 gigabytes. Blender becomes a little bit slower to react, so when it's time to move something, it just takes a while and finally I can take it and move it. As you can see, it's still very easy for my machine to handle that many polys. I added a sphere in the scene, a very low res sphere, so that we can see when we're rendering if it's really gonna slow down when we have that many polys compared to a very light geometry. I'm only gonna use CPU rendering because first, uh, GPU rendering is not supported on the Mac yet, and second, our render farm at the office is CPU only. Everything else will be default settings. You see there's a thing called persistent images. That means it's gonna keep all the textures in memory so that when you render again, it doesn't have to reload all the textures. Now, I really wish there was something called persistent geometry or something like this, because the way it works right now is that every time you render a frame, it's gonna reload the entire geometry. Even if there's nothing going on in the scene, there's no changes from frame one to frame two, it's gonna reload everything and that can slow you down a lot. And if you have a lot of RAM like I do, it would be very useful not to have to reload everything in memory every time. Let's give it a try, render image. Now it takes a good 50 seconds to load everything in memory. This is called time to first pixel. It's the time it takes for the renderer to load everything in memory and prepare all its stuff before it can render the first pixel. So I'm gonna skip this. Now the rendering is starting and let's see the difference it makes. So you see on the sphere it goes very fast and when it gets to the very heavy geometry, it's not much slower. One would expect that it would just stand there and just, you know, take forever to render these polygons, but no, it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going, you know, when somehow I'm thinking of a rabbit, I don't know why. I could have edited that clip to just speed it up, but the idea here is to show you in real time how long it takes to render this. So we'll just let it finish, and in the meantime, I'm gonna tell you a joke. Blender and Maya walk into a bar. Bartender sees Maya and says, Hey, we don't serve their kind here. The render is done and it took 1 minute and 32 seconds. Now you see, we just rendered 27 million polygons and between rendering a low res sphere and a super high res geometry, barely makes an impact. It goes at about the same speed. Are you gonna say, yeah, but it's just a plain shader, add some textures and stuff on it, you'll see it's different. Is it? Now this time there's a glass shader on everything, so it needs to calculate the transparency, the refraction, and everything for all these polygons. So you would think it's gonna be much, much longer, right? Well, it's not, because at the end it took the exact same time. Let's try another one. We're gonna put everything 100% metallic, like super reflective. And it took 1 minute and 20 seconds. By the way, you can see the 27 million polys reflecting on the sphere right here. For this one here, I assigned a 37 by 11 k texture, and it took about the same time. Okay, let's try something. I'm gonna zoom out and put all these 27 million polygons into one bucket, which is one square when it renders, see how it's gonna react. I'm gonna skip the time to first pixel, but I will let the rendering in real time. And here we go, the rendering just started, and now it's rendering the- oh, it's already done, what? Okay, well. Never mind. Okay, so now we made the entire scene completely transparent with refractions. 
no impact. We made it completely metallic, no impact. We threw a 37 by 11 K texture on it, no impact. And now you're thinking, well, my models, my scenes are not that heavy. How come they take forever to render? Well, there are many factors. Uh, GPU, are you using GPU rendering? And what kind of GPU do you have? Is it strong enough? Does it have enough memory? CPU, how many CPUs do you have? Lights, how many lights in your scene and which kind of lights you're using? Because area lights are much more intense to render than uh, a sunlight, for example. So there are many factors like this that can influence your render. But let's go back to hard stuff. In order to keep this scene manageable, I will change the display for this object into bounds. This will create a bounding box that will define the boundaries of the object, so it's much lighter to display on screen because you just have a box instead of all these polys. So I made the copies. Now I have four times the geometry here, 106 billion polygons. These are duplicates, not instances. And it takes 37 gigs of memory, so I'm in the swap because my machine has 36 gigs of RAM. I also want to mention that each forest has a different shader on it, the plain one, the metallic one, the transparent one, and the one with the crazy texture on it. It took three minutes for the time to first pixel, and now it's starting. And it doesn't slow it down, it renders at the same speed as it did before. Of course it's going to take more time because there are more trees on scene, but it doesn't slow down the rendering itself per object. Let's fast forward a little bit. Look at the memory Blender is using right now, 55.9 gigabytes, and I only have 36, well only, I only have 36 gigs of RAM, that means I'm swapping for like 20 gigs. It's completely insane. Some renderers like Arnold and I think Renderman requires that everything fits in RAM, otherwise it's not gonna render. 4 minutes and 17 seconds. Cycles, you rock! I'm gonna push Blender to the maximum capacity of my machine. Let's see how far we can go. I'm gonna change the bounding box display to geometry. I will fast forward here because it takes 45 seconds just to change one of them. So I can move the camera around, that works, but everything else is really, really crazy slow. It takes 30 seconds every time I click on something on the interface, even if it's just like file save as. Okay, now we have way too much stuff on screen. Blender is getting sluggish. Is there something we can do about it? Well, there is. I found this add-on on blenderartist.org called Proxy Tools. It allows you to convert your geometry into a point cloud and makes it very, very light. You can offload the geometry. It means it's not gonna be in your scene anymore. It's just gonna be linked. It's gonna put it in a file. You can decide whatever you want here. And you can decide how much reduction you want of the point cloud to make it lighter so it's easier to handle. Select your object and go create proxy. In this case, it takes a while because it's a very heavy geometry, so we're gonna skip to the result. Here we go. Now we got our point cloud and it's very, very light. Since the goal of this add-on is to keep the viewport light, you absolutely need to do a render to see the result. So, low-res geometry on screen, but high-res geometry at render time. Because I chose the option to offload the geometry, you can see that my scene, the original one, was 2.9 gigabyte, and now it's only 826K. And by the way, the add-on also gives you the possibility to see your geometry as a point cloud or as a bounding box. I converted all four elements for the big, crazy, insane scene, and now you see it's super fast and the interface is not sluggish anymore, it's really back to normal. If you look at the bottom, you can see that I have zero tries, zero faces in it, but I still take 25 gigs of memory. Why? It's because the geometry is still there in the memory, it's just not displayed on screen. As soon as I start the render, look at the bottom, the amount of triangles and faces, it's just gonna jump poof to 100 million polys. Okay, so now we found a way to display very heavy geometry in Blender and it's manageable, everything is referenced, the file is very light, the problem is all the geometry is loaded into memory. Is there a way to go around this? Not in Blender, not that I know of. If you know a way to do it, please tell me in the comments, you will be my savior. Now what about the film industry? When you work on films like Coco or Jungle Book or Zootopia, I mean, you cannot expect the user to have the entire forest of Jungle Book in his scene. It would be impossible to manage. So they have, just like I've shown you, bounding boxes or point clouds, but nothing is loaded in memory until rendering time. And software like Katana can handle this. Uh, Arnold, Renderman can do it. Well, let me show you in Arnold how it works. Now I'm on Linux because I connected to the office so I can show you Maya. You can see Maya's memory right now, it's taking 10 gigabytes, which is about the same thing as Blender for the same geometry. This is the workflow. You select your geometry and you just export it as a stand-in. 
Now, you will have options, and you can decide if you want to keep your cameras, if you want your shaders, if you want, you know, whatever you want to keep in your scene or not. And you can even export an animation, a sequence, which is really cool, because if you have animated objects, you do it in one shot, and that's it. You can have a bounding box for an animated sequence. So we click on export, we give it a name, and we save the file. Now, empty Maya file, let's take a look at the memory. It takes uh, Maya, 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 it takes uh, 535 megs of RAM for an empty file. I don't know why it takes so much memory, but you know, this is what it takes. Well, it's just not just a file, but it's a Maya also. Now we're going to create a stand-in. It's going to create a box. It's empty, there's nothing in it. And we're going to associate a file to this box. So we're going to select the file that we saved before, and you can see that the box changed size. Now it has the size of the geometry that we loaded in. As opposed to the Blender add-on, you can see that the Maya memory didn't change at all because it didn't load the geometry in memory. And just like on the add-on in Blender, you can change the display. I will change it to point clouds. So it's gonna load the geometry as a point cloud. But the difference is, in this case, you cannot decide the amount of reduction. There's no reduction. It shows you all the points, which is something that, you know, I miss, but it's much, much faster anyway. You can see the memory now got a little bit bigger. Well, that's because it had more points to show on screen. That's normal. I have more display options. I can go to wireframe all the way to full shaded geometry with the textures and everything. Now, obviously it's gonna have a big impact on the memory because it needs to load everything. And if you turn it back into a box, well, it's not gonna reduce the memory because it still keeps it for the undos because Maya's undos is very fast, but it takes a lot of memory. So I got my box, if I undo, it's gonna be instantaneous. I'm gonna see it right away. If I save the file, you can see it's absolutely tiny, 50K. Well, it's normal because everything is reference. It does the same in Blender. Now, if you want Blender to succeed in the VFX industry, we need something like this. We need to be able to display on screen a low res geometry, a bonding box, a point cloud, and only at rendering, load the whole shebang. Just to give you an idea, when I was working at Atomic Fiction, we worked on Robert Zemeckis' Welcome to Marwen, and some of the scenes needed machines with 380 gigs of RAM to render the frames. Obviously, you cannot display that much geometry on your screen. It's just too crazy, and you're certainly not gonna go GPU for the rendering. At one point, we needed 44,000 CPUs to render the teaser in time. And we're not talking about Marvel's Endgame here. We're talking about Barbie dolls. It's very important, and this could be part of the asset management or the asset browser that's being developed right now. Imagine you could export your geometry, and when you load it back, you can say, I want to load it as a proxy, as a point cloud. Now, I'm not talking about Blender proxies, I'm talking about industry standards proxies. Okay, so that would be very, very cool. That's my wish for 2021, okay? because I'm doing a Blender Bob on December 31st, and I don't know why I'm doing this now, because I'm, well, I'm dedicated. Yeah, yellow cat. I wish you all a wonderful get the hell out of here 2020 and a wonderful welcome 2021 because it's about time we've been waiting for a year. Hey cat, come on here.